Welcome back to Aberdeen, the oil capital of the north. Where we're trying to find a bachelor pad for company exec Donald Bailey. So far we've seen a house, a flat and a converted church. The flat Hamilton Place is the clear favourite, but we've got three more very different propositions ahead. There's a huge variety of property available in Aberdeen, but they all have one thing in common, granite. The distinctive grey stone gives the city a silvery look on a sunny day, but a gloomy feel on a cloudy one. And, as the city is on a latitude north of Moscow, there are quite a few of those. But the sun is still shining as we head to our fourth property back in Ferry Hill, close to Aberdeen's beach and a short walk to the city centre. We've found something here on a grander scale, with rental potential. Quite an opulent staircase to start us off with. Absolutely, yeah. The house has got four bedrooms. Okay. Seems as though you're getting a lot of space for your money here. It's a couple of reception rooms. Yeah. And it's on the market. It offers over 135,000. Oh, that's unreasonable. This one's pushing Donald's budget, but it is on two floors and has a brand new kitchen and bathroom. What's more, there's scope for another ensuite upstairs, which would increase the value of the property and would be useful for a lodger. <laughs> that's really nice. I'm room for my PlayStation there, yes. Good size. Yeah, it's a nice looking room. All in all, the flat's in good shape on the inside, and at the back it has a large garden with a drying area. But this is shared with the flat below. Not necessarily a problem, but there are things to watch out for. If you're thinking of buying a flat with a communal garden, meet the neighbours and check they're on the same wavelength as you. Obviously, a certain amount of diplomacy is required. The other thing that's really important is access. There are all sorts of horror stories about people who buy gardens and can't get to them. Check with your solicitor. Details of this should be in the package of papers which are sent from the vendor. This flat is a great example of a period property elegantly updated. Modern, clean, tidy. Yeah, it's lovely. Again, it's quite like the bathroom, very nicely done out. There's no need for Donald to get his hands dirty here, but he'll have to pay more for the convenience of it. Well, I really like the flat. It's been done out very nicely, but it's a different prospect from the, the other two-bedroom flats that we've seen. And since it's at the top end of my budget, it does make me feel slightly uncomfortable. Right. Let's go for it. So, Donald likes the flat, but not the price. We yeah. think we have the answer just a few yards along the same road. Well, Donald, this is our next house here. OK. It's the biggest house that we're going to see, and it's also the cheapest. Hmm. Let's find out why. <laughs> OK. Hey, not too soon, Phil. Hold back on the hard facts. First impressions are important. Let's see what Donald thinks. Oh, wow, I love this staircase. It's wonderful that this is all yours, so although it's a flat, you have your own front door and this is your own staircase and it's absolutely beautiful. I know, it's a lovely entrance. You said the last one was opulent. Yes, this is Byzantine. Byzantine, but a bargain, because it badly needs bringing into the 21st century. With four bedrooms and loads of potential, its honour offers over £85,000. Despite its dated decor, it's got loads of space. This is the kitchen. And right. as you'll see, it's not full of all the mod cons. No. It does need some updating. Now, this sink is a double Belfast sink. And it's pretty amazing. Look, here, it's really, really deep. And on this side, it's really shallow. All oh, right, yeah. In a reclamation yard, you might have to pay up to £500 for something like this. It's so antique, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's really amazing, but you might want to keep something like that because even if it's not your kind of thing, these things are wildly fashionable and it's a real selling point when you come to sell on. Yeah, no. The thing about renovating a house like this is you've got to know what to keep and what to let go. I love this carpet with the wooden stair rods. I think this has the potential to be the nicest bathroom that we've looked at. Doesn't look up to much now, I know, but this is the most spectacular basin with this detail underneath. Now that is a freestanding bath and it's been panelled and you could just get rid of that. But once you'd finished, it'd be pretty spectacular. No, absolutely. I think you've pulled another rabbit out of the hat here. This seems to have so much potential and it does have attractions, definitely. Now there's a few things that you should know. Uh -huh. This flat came on the market five days ago. It has already had 12 viewings. A survey was done yesterday and there's one booked for tomorrow. 
It's on the market for offers over £85,000 and it may go well above that. I think I'm still keen on it. I think it's uh, a bargain. I can't resist a bargain. This is a big job and what he's saving on the price tag will cost him time and effort. It's not a project to be taken on lightly, but he could make money on it. We feel he needs more time to think. On to our final property that offers the best of both worlds. Stanley Street is well within Donald's budget and offers over £98,000. It's a property with hidden depths. Very sunny hallway. Oh, yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. Come in, Donald. We'll go straight yes. to the living room. This is really, really nice. It's a perfect example mm. of how you should show a flat. It really is. Absolutely. But good presentation alone shouldn't swing a sale. However, it seems to be impressing Donald. And again in the kitchen, it's presented in fantastic condition. It looks lovely, I have to say. Uh, the, whole, the whole flat's been done out very nicely. Having had a good look about the flat, Donald, I've got one question for you. Is it big enough? It's pretty much big enough. My only concern is the second bedroom, which is a little bit smaller than I would like. OK. Well, we've got a slight surprise for you because beneath us there's a basement that's practically as big as this flat. Oh, wow. Um, there sits the boiler. We believe that you could put a spiral staircase down here to the basement, which would open up an entirely new flat to you. Oh, wow, yeah, I'd be interested in that, definitely. Mm -hmm. We're going to find come it. Come have a look. OK. Now, the downside, Donald, is that you have to come out of the flat in order to get to your basement. Oh, OK. But it's worth it once you've made the journey. Right. Yeah. Come and see what you think. Well, what do you make of this, Donald? Not a huge amount of ceiling height, but a hell of a lot of space. Yeah. This is where that spiral staircase that we thought could come down. OK. If you were going to convert these into habitable rooms, you would need a building certificate to do that, and they'd be looking at fire regulations and things like that. All right. Yes, so a good feeling about this place. I think it's done out very nicely. It's a good location. It's got a garden and the extra space in the basement really does make up for my slight concern about the size of the second bedroom. And I think with the price of it, I'll have a, a little bit extra cash to do any renovations that I might want to do. We've seen all six properties now and Donald's going to have to make some decisions. He likes this flat at Stanley Street, but does it compare to the end of Terrace flat on Hamilton Place? He seems happy to renovate at Braemar Place, but could he be biting off more than he could chew? I think Donald's got difficult decisions ahead of him. Not sure if I'd want to be skippering his boat. I think he's going to go for the easy options. Although yeah. he says he wants to do work, at the end of the day, I think he just wants to get in there, settle down in front of the telly with a beer. After a long, hard think, Donald decides that Braemar Place isn't for him. The amount of work needed is, after all, too much to handle. So it's down to Hamilton Place with its big rooms and small bathroom to battle it out with Stanley Street and its potential for expansion. The difference between the two properties is the basement. Uh, so I'll be looking at that and seeing how much work needs done and see if it's a really an extra benefit. OK. On a second viewing, you have got to be analytical and leave your emotions behind. Donald brings along his brother Kenneth to help with decisions. As his potential lodger, he'll be casting a critical eye. First up, Stanley Street. Kenneth, this is obviously the, the smaller of the rooms. This would be your room, if the landlord agreed. It's quite small. I don't know. I think this would be better city for you, Donald. <laughs> oh, really? <No. laughs> for our second look at the basement, we've asked quantity surveyor David Much to establish the cost of making this space habitable, including plumbing for a second bathroom. The, the roof's quite low. The main thing we're going to have to do, probably, is to lower the floor. There may be a damp problem. There doesn't seem to be much evidence around, but uh, you never know until you go down. The initial cost, if everything works out OK, would probably be about 18000 Until you've gone down there, you don't know how low the foundations are. If they aren't low enough, then you'll have to pay an additional £6,000. That's right, isn't it, David? Yeah, to have it underpinned. This is a costly business that involves propping up supporting walls while lowering the property's foundations. Be aware that until you actually buy the property and begin work like this, there's no way of knowing how low the existing foundations are and therefore if underpinning is absolutely necessary. Kirsty learnt the hard way. Now I know about this because I had to do this when I bought my own flat, but surprisingly they wouldn't let me do it before I'd bought it. I had to wait until I paid for it before I made a huge hole <laughs> I mean, in the floor. <laughs> how much extra value could I get for the property? Well, we've spoken to one or two estate agents about it. One 
said it would add up to £50,000 to the value of this flat. Wow. Sounds OK, definitely. So, Donald, it was a really good vibe when you first came here. Same feelings? Yes, definitely. Um, perhaps even better. It's, it's, it's so nicely done out. It's lovely. Stanley Street offers a way of adding value and extra space in the basement. And what about Donald's other choice? So here we are, back at Hamilton Place. Yes. Let's see if we feel the same way about it. Let's see what Kenny thinks. Yeah. <laughs> Donald seems pretty set on Stanley Street. I reckon he's forgotten just how big the rooms are here, though. Mm. Oh, it's a lot bigger, mm -hmm. isn't it, than Stanley Street? Mm -hmm. I think uh, to get a direct comparison is really useful, actually. This flat does have larger rooms, but it is more expensive, and remember that small bathroom. There's room for an ensuite in the master bedroom, but that's another cost to consider. However, this could be covered by the extra income he'll get from renting to his brother. Lots of people use lodgers and, and tenants to uh, help pay the mortgage. Firstly, you need to advise your mortgage company, and secondly, your contents insurers. They would consider renting a room to a young student brother more of a risk, I'm afraid. I think I have to go away and do some sums. Which property will measure up to Donald's spec? I think this one. I think Stanley Street. I like this one, don't get me wrong. I would like him to buy this one. I think this is bigger, it's more spacious. Ultimately, it's got less work, but you can still add value. Yeah. Um, but I think he'll go for Stanley Street. This is the difference, Kenny, with the dining table. That's kind of quite a big yeah. difference between the two places, having that dining area. But then my fridge freezer, that's the different other place as well. It doesn't have room for my big fridge freezer. Right. So that's an advantage of this place. Half an hour ago, I, w I, would have, I would have been on your side with Stanley Street, but I think coming in here, I'd have a bet on this one. OK. Usual amount? Yep, usual amount. <sighs> what do you think, then, Kenny? Oh, I like the sofa, it's very comfy. Is the Granite City going to have a new homeowner? Under the Scottish system, the first step to buying a property is to submit a note of interest. You then get it surveyed, and if you're happy, put in an offer. So what does Donald want to do? I think I am going to put a notice of interest in on Stanley Street. Weighing up all the factors, I think Stanley Street uh, being a little bit less expensive, it just makes me feel a little bit better and it feels like more of a bargain. Will you do the basement? I don't think I would do it initially. Well, it's a truism, but often they say if you don't do the work in the first six months, it never gets done. Somehow you get used to it as it is. So I would say forge ahead. Well, let us know how you get on. I will do. Best of luck with it. Thanks very much. And a little later, he did. On the Stanley Street property, uh, I got that surveyed to my satisfaction and I put in an offer, but uh, a lot of other people realised it was a good opportunity and so I actually missed out on that one. Some properties appeal across the board and competition is bound to be fierce. But Donald's not disheartened, he's back on the hunt.